Okay, we're recording. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What episode is it? It's my mine. Okay. It's mine. Okay. <sighs> okay. Was that too loud? A <laughs> little bit. <laughs> okay. Hi, and welcome to episode 16 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. This week, we are going to talk about familiars. But first, what are we drinking? And I just kind of want to talk today, just a little bit. Okay. Just to say what's going on a little bit in our lives. Okay. I think that'd be fun. So what are you drinking? Well, I have discovered a new drink called the French 75, but I don't have the stuff to make it here at home. So... I it's it's a gin drink, which I never have liked gin. Blech. I know it tastes like pine trees, but this is high end gin, and you put champagne in with it. Uh huh. And it's so good. It's good. Oh God, yeah. I'm gonna have to try it. You're gonna have to make me some next time, maybe later today. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> I was gonna say next time we meet, but I'm gonna hang out a little bit here um, after, and I'm just having a Pepsi right now. Well, I'll make you one of these before the day is done. Yes. Yes. I And like I said, I'm drinking a Pepsi, a diet Pepsi. Okay. I've been on a Pepsi kick. I don't know. I haven't been feeling alcohol as much. So, And I, I just had last week a lot of pina coladas. Mm-hmm. So I kind of made up for my not wanting to drink to drinking pina coladas. And now I'm back to not wanting to drink again. So Yeah. I mean, it's hard to also compare to a pina colada on the beach. That's true. I mean, you just need your tropical drinks. And I guess, I mean, I alternated a little bit, like virgin pina coladas Mm -hmm. and strawberry daiquiris Mm -hmm. and also adding alcohol. But at some point during the week, the pina coladas just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. I wonder if that's true or if you were just getting drunker and drunker and drunker. Maybe a little bit of both. (laughs) But yeah, how have you been this week? Because I feel like I have, I went on vacation, so it feels like I'm in a, I was in a completely different world and now I'm back. So how have you been? Uh, Same old, same old here. Working hard. Don't like it. Yeah. Trying to, oh, I have been documenting in my moon journal Oh, this month. And I know that you've been journaling every day, too. And yes. I was like, you know, I really need to get myself centered, get myself back on track. I don't feel connected to nature. I'm not feeling connected to the magic right now. And so I bought one of those moon journals from Dragoncraft Creations mm-hmm. and... Um, It comes, it's like a little spiral notebook. Well, not little. It's a normal size spiral notebook. And I got to pick the cover that I wanted and all of that. And so I have been documenting in that. And I'm starting to feel more myself again. That sounds so good. Yes. Yeah. I've been journaling as well. Mm -hmm. And I've been obsessed with stickers Uh to go on them. And I bought like I think three stickers from Etsy and then I bought one while I was on vacation to go on it, but I bought a, a holographic mushroom from, Oh, um, I, I'll post the Etsy stores that I okay. bought them from because I love them. One of, one of the stickers that I put on it, I had bought a while ago and it was limited edition, but I can still post the shop and it's like, it's the weirdest thing. It's a chicken. It's a holographic a chicken. chicken with sneakers on. Oh, is it, is it a chicken that helps with divination and that gets thrown overboard? Yes, yes, yes. Chicken's <laughs> overboard. <laughs> but it has sneakers on and it's just the That's cutest so cute. thing. And one of them, I am a big October fan. Halloween has always been my favorite, but now it's Samhain. Mm-hmm. Now that we, I'm more dedicated and practicing magic, mm-hmm. now it's Samhain. And I bought this sticker and it's like a goat with like white eyes and it has like pumpkins sitting in front of it and it is my favorite sticker on my book right now besides my chicken (laughs) (laughs) but yeah i i'll post this this the stores that i bought them from off etsy and i've actually bought 
a lot from one of the stores for us. I bought those glasses for us yes. from one of the same stores that I bought the sticker from. I'm a big sticker fan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love those glasses, too. I forgot about that. I need to find it. I'm not drinking I out of is. that today. I know where mine is. I just have not been at my apartment in a month. We've been going back and forth between my parents and my husband's parents' place. And mm-hmm. and I've been up over here at your place, like, a lot of the mm-hmm. summer so that we can record in person. And Yeah, our dogs are having play dates. I know. Mm-hmm. I don't think my dog likes it that much. <laughs> <laughs> She's very um, antisocial. <laughs> so right now we're out on my deck. And a hummingbird just flew up to our hummingbird feeder. He's sitting on that tree right over there. Let me see. Can you see the little branch that is sticking down? Yes. On this closest pine tree? Yeah. He's sitting right there. I don't see it. (laughs) Oh. But he's waiting for us to go inside. Yeah. So that he can get some of the, the nectar. I'm yeah. sorry, buddy, but we're not going inside for that. <laughs> not for a little not bit. Not for a little bit. Okay. But since we're talking about animals and pets, let's hop right into it with familiar notes. Okay. And not notes. Uh, <laughs> with our topic. With our topic. What is a familiar? <laughs> Tell me. So, according to Wikipedia, Familiars were believed to be supernatural entities that would assist witches and cunning folk in magic. Mat in pr- blah, 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 blah. wow, we just started <laughs> in practice practices, magic practices. Let's just say, okay, I'm. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, um, a familiar spirit. There, there's actual documents from the uh, witch trials in the past. Okay, and those documents say that a spirit. I mean, a familiar is a spirit that aided the witch in her magical workings. I've heard that. I've read that. I mean, it's actually documented. Yeah. 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 So familiars are also known as imps. And I'll, I'll say that again later. And are usually household pets that serve as a companion to a witch. According to legend, they are guides who take the form of an animal on earth. They are loyal guardians and protectors of witches who are sent to help. Uh, assist them with their magic okay yeah some say the devil gives witches their familiars yeah and then in exchange the witch would make a pact with the familiar that would define what the witch would do for the familiar and what the familiar spirit would do for the witch Mm -hmm. Um, these could take on any form including animals or human likenesses yeah and also back when witches were being persecuted and killed Black cats were often rounded up and persecuted and killed as well. I saw that. Yeah. Um, And, you know, that negative connotation lingers today with people being afraid of black cats. Yeah. Yeah. And black cats are, I've I've heard, I haven't fact checked this, but black cats are the only cats that like aren't adopted from like shelters and stuff like that because of the the bad connotation that's with the black cats. Yeah. I've heard that. Around Halloween, people will go and adopt them and then abandon them. They just want them for the Halloween. I hate that. I hate that, too. I see your pets as family. Yeah. So I don't understand when somebody adopts their, adopts a pet and then just leaves them behind. Like, I I just, I don't. That's just nasty to me. Yeah, it's not right. Did you watch, I think you said, I think I've asked you this before, did you watch that new Sabrina the Teenage Witch show that came out? Yes, I watched it all. So in the very beginning, she gets her familiar, and of course in that show, the devil is a real thing. And yeah. um, So she goes into the woods and comes out with this spirit, and it turns into a cat, and that's Salem her, her cat. Yeah, yeah. What, while I was watching it, I kind of got, like, you got in the in the show, they got to pick like purebred familiars, and then they got to pick the form that they took in the mm-hmm. show. But the main character, she didn't want like a purebred uh, familiar. Like I don't remember what they were called, but she went and summoned her own, and yes. that's what Salem became. And I thought that was really cool. I think so too. And part of it's because she's half human, half witch, yeah. and so for her. Her familiar needed to be special just to like her. her yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
So historically, over the centuries, familiars have taken many forms. No matter what their form um, is, their task is to assist the witch. I'm I'm kind of laughing because Wren came back from the beach with a cold. Okay, listen, if you hear sniffling, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I just sniffed and I was like, wait, can you hear it? And oh, I like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I might have to go back and cut that out. That's awful. Nobody wants to sit here and listen to my sif- sniffling. Woo. Well, I think you should tell your husband you need to go back to the beach to help dry it out. Yeah, to you get know, rid of that's it. That's what yeah, you yeah, need yeah. to do. You need to go back to the beach. Uh, at any rate, the familiar helps with different types of magic and helps helps direct manipulations of natural energies contained in stones, herbs, astrological aspects, and in the four elements. Mm -hmm. Uh, Familiar helps enhance enhance the witch's power. They are healers and guardians. They can warn the witch of danger or, in the extreme, defend the witch. Yeah. Now, before we go too much farther, we need to make it clear we're not saying that everybody has to have a familiar oh for sure yeah i mean it's just some witches do some witches don't we're not we're not saying that this is a must to be a witch definitely yeah Yeah, for sure like like what do you think your familiar is and what do i think mine is i would say i don't have one Mm -hmm. but i would also say that my dog um my dog her name is ariel she's a dachshund I would say that she is one yeah. to me. Kind of yes and no. She's more of the companionship side than the magical side. I got her when she was about seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a friend who was giving her away because they were moving and they just didn't have space. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I saved her because she was, like, literally the best thing whenever I went over to my friend's house. Mm-hmm. She was so adorable, so happy, and she has anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I just knew once my friend gave her away, if she went to strangers, she would have had a really hard time adjusting. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I begged my father. I was like, (laughs) can we please get another dog? And he made a deal with me. He was like, if you take care of the dog, then yes. So I kind of fought for her a little Mm -hmm. bit. And, you know, she, she has my heart. She yeah, is I can see my that baby. forging a big uh, communication uh, a bond with, with that dog. So yeah. she may very well be your familiar. Yeah, I could see it. Just the way that she looks at me. How, how does she react when you cast spells or when you're meditating? Or does she come over? Does yeah, she... she usually sits in my lap whenever I'm meditating mm-hmm. or when I sit down on the ground, like usually in my like. I do like the generic, like crisscross applesauce Mm -hmm. kind of meditation and she'll come and sit in my lap. And I think mostly because she, I just sit on the floor and she can't hop up onto the couch or anything. Yeah. So she's like, oh, mom is there for me. And so she'll (laughs) come and like climb in my lap and everything. But she's always around me. She knows when I'm sad because I've had her since I was a teenager and, you know, teenagers are they, we go through our, our moods when we're younger, and so she just knows. And it's just, like, the way she looks at me is, like, the way that you want your, like, your lover to look at you. Mm-hmm. It's, like, pure love and devotion. Yeah. And yeah. I could talk for hours on how much I love my pet. Yeah. My familiar. <laughs> well. What, like, what's yours? I, I have pets, but they are not my familiars. Yeah. In fact, there's been a lot of debate as to whether a pet can be a familiar. Mm-hmm. But of course, I think they can. Um, yeah. so, I mean, yeah. um, but it isn't a necessity. Um, spells and rituals can go much smoother with the assistance of a regular familiar, like a pet that's in your home. Mm-hmm. And there, But there's no harm in having one that isn't a pet. Yeah. And, um, oh, did you know that dogs are considered to be protectors of the earthly realm? Really? Yeah. Okay. I could go off on tangents about that. Yeah. But that 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 makes sense. It actually makes sense. It does to me too. They are more earthy creatures to me. Yeah. Mine, and this is gonna sound weird, you already know this. <laughs> I but... think you're a crackadoodle. <laughs> <laughs> My familiars are carpenter bees. And they are such curious creatures. They come and spend time with me when I'm out on my deck, whether I'm working magic, gardening, or just hanging out. They're always around me. They are so curious. 
They seem to love my moon water jars. They watch me work with my crystals. I just feel energy when they're around me. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually have like a, like a little story. So it was one day I was at my apartment and I know that the carpenter bees are like your familiars. Mm -hmm. Like you are, you feel that energy with them. Mm -hmm. I don't. I just don't understand that. They're <laughs> they're annoying little pests to me. I'll never like I'll never harm one. I just don't want it near me. They're just annoying. Like I, I just go away, right? Mm-hmm. I'll never harm one though. And I was outside uh, at my apartment and we don't really have wood. Our my apartment is made of brick and metal. And okay. It's like industrial. Okay. And I was outside and there was like maybe four carpenter bees that were just like swarming like around my plants and everything and I was like Ugh, river must be here somewhere <laughs> I was so, there in spirit yeah so I go inside and I close the door and I go into my kitchen where I have a window and all four of them followed me to my window and I was like fine I will text river and I texted you that day and I was like, hey, like, are you OK? Like, I literally asked you, are you OK? Out of the blue. And you're like, I'm just having a bad day. Aww. And I was like, OK, your little carpenter bees are trying to tell me something. Yeah. And I was like, I, I don't like to believe that the carpenter bees are your familiars. I don't know why. It's just weird. It's a, uh-huh. it's not normal. It's not that- a normal thing. I, who's to say anything is normal with witchcraft? That's true. So it's just like, it's not the norm that people usually study, but whatever it works for you works How for cool you. How cool that they came and told you I wasn't feeling well. I just thought, yeah, I thought it was really cool. And after I had like, after they followed me to my kitchen on the other side of my apartment, which I mean, it's a 600 square foot apartment. It's not that far, <laughs> but to like follow me through my windows and like hit themselves against my glass on my window, mm-hmm. I was like, what are are you doing? And I was like, oh, I guess I'll text River. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess I will text her and see if she's okay. And you were just like down that day. Mm-hmm. And I think after that, I FaceTimed you and we just sat and talked and yep. FaceTime that day. And it was, it was, I think it was nice for you. I think it's something that you yeah, needed that I think day. So I remember that day. I, I didn't, you didn't ever tell me that my no, I never um, told you. familiars came and got you. No, I never told that you that. That was a bad, bad day. But I do remember. And I remember going, oh, fine I'll see you what's up with river and I was like it's probably nothing because usually I look over things like this like I'm like oh it's just a coincidence I think a lot of things are coincidences and I could also go on a tangent of everything that's been happening to me medium wise because I also think I have a connection to the spirit realm where Mm -hmm. I hear things that my husband I'm like oh my god did you hear like did you hear that he's like no or I'll walk into a room and it's so loud, so loud. And I'm like, oh, like all these people are talking. It sounds so loud when I walk into a room or when I'm trying to go to sleep. I get these like flashes of like visions and stuff. And I, mm-hmm. I chalk it up to I'm going to sleep. Your imagination can spike mm-hmm. and everything. But I don't know. You should I don't know. go I have, with your gut. Yeah, I just... I don't want to open myself up to that world yet. I'm not ready. I'm not ready yeah. for it. Yeah. So I'm not going to open well, myself up to it. I think if you start tracking that in your journal, yeah, you know, that might be something that you'll start to develop because you're, you're uh, paying attention to it. Yeah. I'm scared because a lot of the research that I have done about like coincidences that are not coincidences mm-hmm. Like you open up your third eye, yeah. you become more known to what's around you and you start seeing shadow people and yeah, everything. you've got I just a thing about shadow people. I, I, I'm truly terrified. Yeah. And I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want to mm-hmm. start seeing them. I will. I refuse to open that part up until I'm ready. And I am definitely not ready yeah. for that. So I, I have, I have a hard time, <laughs> okay. but coincidences that are not coincidences, like, like your familiars, mm-hmm. four of them. It's not, it's not just like, it was just one hitting itself up against the window. It was literally all four of them that were bothering me on my deck went and followed me to my kitchen and hit themselves against the glass. That's in my crazy. Window. I remember that day. It was an awful day and it did make me feel so much better to connect with you and yeah. talk to you. Yeah. 
I just, I had no idea. That's so cool. That gives me shivers. I didn't want to tell. Well, I think I briefly told you. I was like, oh, yeah, your familiars, like, told me, like, you were having a bad day. But I think that we both kind of, like, brushed it off when yeah. I said it. And then now I'm just elaborating on yeah, what that meant. <laughs> that day, I probably wasn't even hearing that because it was it was an awful day. Um, yeah. But that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, so let's move on to a little bit more. Okay. So familiars are physically connected and can communicate telepathically with their witches. And that connection is stronger, like, in time. So, like, it grows and grows and grows as the time goes on. And in times of need, which is probably why they came to you that yeah. day. Yeah. So when I think of that, I, I kind of think, when did I get my dog? You mm -hmm. know, because was it in a time that like I needed her? Because I got her when I was 14. Okay. Well, that's an age that we all need help at. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just trying to think like I can't remember when I needed in that time. But was she something that came to me in like a time where I was really sad or depressed? Mm -hmm. Or because my friend, she was moving and she yeah. was my only friend that I had. And so I feel like maybe that was the part that like of myself maybe. that was sad. And, yeah. and my dog Ariel was just something like a familiar that was there for me and mm -hmm. helped me. But again, I wasn't even practicing witchcraft at the yeah. time. Yeah. It's just things like this happen without us even noticing coincidence or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So familiars are also healers and magical magical practitioners in their own way mm -hmm. they hold their own magical properties and powers to help their witch they are more than just juice boxes as right. I, I i call them right. for witches they are emotional and physical beings that help the witch in one in more than what more than the wow i'm just <laughs> off my rocker today which is more they help witches in, in more, more than, than one, one way. way. Oh, my gosh. And, <laughs> I knew what you meant. Oh, and they are uh, emotional support pets, too. But I also feel like we help them as well. I think so. Like, it's like, it's not I, just us. Like, I, it's not like I there are juice a, boxes. A go before a go between. Mm -hmm. I mean, otherwise, why would the carpenter bees come and watch me do my meditations or my work with my crystals? They come and watch. I mean, they they hover and they look at me and they turn and look at the crystals. It's the strangest and... thing, guys. Like, I, I, I was over here and uh, River was outside on her deck doing her little mojo outside. Mm -hmm. And the bees, they, they literally do. They just sit there and hover and mm -hmm. stare at you. Mm -hmm. And then they'll look at what you're doing and then they'll stare back at you. Mm -hmm. And it's like... They are curious little things. They really I, I are. I will say that. I love them. Yeah. Back in ancient times, they there was hysteria associated with familiars, and people had the weirdest ideas. Like, people thought that the familiar fed from the witch's blood. Fair. I mean, <laughs> just so strange. I mean, maybe, I don't even know where that would come from. I'm just trying to, like, think, but, like. I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like people just tried to come up with like the nastiest thing to like know. blame witches on. But if if you do have a familiar that feeds on your blood, there's no shame. No, I'm just saying like Ooh, back someone back can in the time have a tick or a leech as their familiar. Oh, I mean, those creatures do to drink each blood. their own. Yeah. <laughs> so if like if that is your familiar, if you think bugs are your familiar mm -hmm. or whatever, like that's that's to each their own. Like it's whatever yeah. you feel. But in back in the day, like when they were making up like ancient times when they were making up all this awful stuff about witches just to like see them crucified or yeah. like like burned alive is just like yeah, dark times. Um, in New Guinea, sorcerers use snakes and crocodiles as familiars. In Malaya, the familiar is often a badger or an owl. And familiars can be passed down from generation to generation. Hmm. In ancient Egypt, you know, they worship that cat-headed... Sphinx. Well, it's Bestet. She was... Oh. She maybe maybe that is what the Sphinx was was Bastet, mm -hmm. um, but she was associated with 
being the goddess of fertility, domestic happiness, pleasure, dance, and music. And because of this, they revered cats. Yeah. And they believed each cat had a little bit of the essence of that goddess in them. Mm -hmm. So they were revered over there as opposed to, you know, in England and the United States, they were rounded up and killed because they people thought they were familiars. Yeah. But familiars can come and go. Your familiar spirit may not be what you're expecting. Your companionship may not last long. I mean, sometimes a familiar appears just for a fleeting moment to help you with something in particular that you're dealing with, some spell, some connection that you need, and then they go. Um, or they can be a close ally for years, like Ariel. Yeah. Um, but their impact is the same. They have a big impact on our lives. And, you know, and like carpenter bees have life cycles, but they come back. I know it's not the same carpenter bees. Yeah. But I think they're connected and they come back every year. Yeah. The bees. Yeah. So how do you find your familiar? Mm -hmm. Well, it could be a pet. You know, have you ever gone somewhere to buy or adopt a pet and you just bonded with one immediately? Uh, I've never. Actually, really? I've never adopted a pet. I saved Ariel from my friend. Yeah. Um, and obviously my family has had pets before, but we never, I, I never got to go mm-hmm. and adopt them and mm-hmm. save them. I never got to go. So when it came to my dog, when I saved her, it just felt like the it right thing felt right. to do. Yeah. Well, there is that sometimes, and I have felt a connection with an animal just right off the bat, and there could be a reason for that. It could be that your energies are speaking to each other, so be open to that Yeah. if you're looking for a familiar. Yeah. Is there an animal in your area that always seems to cross your your path? Maybe it's a bird that visits your yard that you see every day, Mm -hmm. or a squirrel that seems to hang around and pay, pay special attention to you. Sometimes you see them often enough to get to know their habits and all of that. That could be your familiar. Yeah. Um, If it's a temporary familiar, it might be there just to get you through that particular challenge, like I was saying. And then when Mm -hmm. you no longer need them, they move on to another witch that needs them. Yeah. So there's all kinds of creatures that literally anything can be a familiar. Yeah. And I found a web uh, page that... Ren will put into the uh, podcast when she uploads it. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was talking about dragonflies. Their beautiful jewel-like colors and transient lives represent change and transformation. They're considered symbols of wisdom and maturity developed within a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. They are also associated with creativity and activities that require specialized skills. Goats. Goats? Yeah. Okay. Uh, goats. Yes. Goats are co- like like hinted at that they're connected to the devil. the devil and stuff like that. So when you say goats, that's the first thing that, wow, that's the first thing that my mind goes to only because of mainstream media and how they, they still depict witches. I think of the goats as the little ones when you're trying to do yoga that climb up your back. When I think of goats, it's not that cute. You, I don't know if you've seen this movie. It was not the best movie. Don't come at me if you guys like the movie. But it was called The Witch, the witch with the yeah, two Vs. Yeah, yeah. And that goat. That's the goat I think about now. Oh, After yeah. I've seen it, I saw it maybe like a couple years ago, maybe when it came out. But that's the goat I think about whenever I think about goats now. <laughs> I just think of the yoga goats. They're much cuter. Yeah, that's a lovelier picture <laughs> yes. in your mind than the the witch goat. <laughs> yes. Uh, goat offers um, a different perspective on life. They urge their witch to maintain a strong and individual personality. Owls. Okay, okay. 
owls creep me out. Oh, yeah, I think you've said that before. <laughs> I don't know if I've, ar- I've already mentioned this on I the podcast. I think you did. The, uh, my dad traumatized me with this movie growing up. I, I think I've already said Yeah, you did. I think I have The Fourth Kind. Yes. And it's based off of, like, owls, and I don't dig owls. Like, I won't ever. I don't look at an owl the same way anymore. <laughs> so an owl may never be my familiar, and that is okay. <laughs> Yeah, that is okay. But they are connected with your nocturnal habits and the lunar cycles. That makes both, that makes them um, great familiars if you enjoy, enjoy attuning yourself to the lunar phases. Which I do, but I will but not never, with an owl. No, never equate myself with an owl. <laughs> Owls are also a sign of wisdom and have a strong connection to nature. Okay. Rabbits. Across Ireland and Scotland, rabbits were once believed to be another alternate form that a witch could take on. Oh, okay. So according to some ancient religions, several goddesses have chosen the rabbits specifically as their sacred animals. You have Aphrodite, Hecate, Artemis, which Artemis is the, has the hair. Yeah. Hulda, which is a German germanic goddess and she had a torch holding hair as part of her attendance okay um they have been associated with the ability to commune with the fairy world Uh, the animal itself is usually seen during the in-between hours which that's another topic we could spiral down on those in-between times yeah um but of the time of rising dawn and sunset and their quick movements and natural habits are interpreted as access to hidden knowledge. You know, I've seen a lot of, uh, like, rabbits and bunnies uh, mm-hmm. recently because my husband's parents' place, like their house, mm-hmm. they live in, like, a, they have a, a bigger backyard. And their dog is a golden doodle. And she'll, she won't eat them, which she's so, so sweet and gentle. She'll just chase them, maybe give them a heart attack, <laughs> but she won't eat them. But there have been so many in their backyard recently that she's just been like out there just chasing them for hours. Oh, like it's adorable. So I've seen a lot of rabbits. So maybe they're her familiars. <laughs> maybe so. Because <laughs> she won't kill them. Yeah. My dad also gardens. He's out of, he's in a different state and... Um, he always has rabbits in his garden because his garden is nothing like my garden. It's a, a very rich, beautiful garden. But don't y'all get deer? <laughs> yeah, well, we get deer here. My garden, we grew, um, I was so excited that we grew bush beans. Uh huh. And we've got a deer and her babies that came in and ate them all. I love hearing you talk about this. You you complain about it to me at least like three times a week. <laughs> about the deer that they're about eating the my garden. Yeah, you and your husband. Y'all will both come up to me and be like, we have no beans. All the deer ate mm-hmm. them. And it's just funny. I hear about I, it three times a week. <laughs> I was very excited about those green beans and now we aren't going to have them. Okay, snakes. There are also religions and cultures that view the snake as a symbol of rebirth, transformation, and the general cycle of life. Okay, I love snakes. I don't... Okay, the first time I held one was first year of college. Um, My professor, cool dude, Mm -hmm. Professor Patrick Kane or something like that. We called him Professor P. Wonder if he's related to me. Uh, I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He was from... Somewhere, like Indiana or something. Hmm. He was really cool dude. He goes, do you guys want to see my pet snake? And we're like, we're thinking like, like in a couple days, he'd bring a pet snake. Because people were like, yeah, cool. He, he was a biology professor. Okay. So it, it, we were on some sort of biology related to animals um, in that class. And he goes, do you want to see my pet snake? And he just pulls it out of his book bag. Oh, my God. In, like, a sack. And he goes, yeah, I had to bring her today because, like, something. And she's fine in her sack, you know. But he said his office had, like, a whole, like, terrain, like, for them. Uh So he just brought her with him to his classroom and was, like, planning on showing us anyways. It was like, here's my snake. It was a beautiful snake. I can't remember. I think it was a... I think you know more snake names because your husband knows more snake mm-hmm. names, but like a corn snake yeah, or something like that? Yeah, there is like a that. corn snake. I think it was one of those. I was bitten Beautiful. by a snake when I was a baby. I remember you telling me that story. It was a, a milk snake. 
A milk snake? Yeah, I was a toddler. I couldn't even walk yet. I was crawling. And apparently my siblings had gone out to the field with a little picnic blanket. Yeah. And when they brought it back home and I crawled into it, and apparently there was a milk snake in it. And it bit me in the face. <gasps> and the, the doctors couldn't figure out what kind of bug bite it was. Yeah. Until my mom washed that picnic blanket and there was a dead snake in the washing machine. Then they're like, oh, she got bitten by a snake. Oh, my God. That's awful. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan of snakes. I just heard that. I think, I mean, I've heard it before, but I like as if I've never heard that. But just mm-hmm. hearing that you got bit in the face, mm-hmm. just like you've told it to me, like maybe a couple times. And every time I'm like, Ugh, mm-hmm. like I could never like as a baby, like Ugh. at least you're a baby and couldn't remember. Well, or do you remember? Maybe it? that's what I don't know that I remember, but I'm not a fan of snakes. Maybe that's why they scare me. Yeah. Um, according to ancient Celtic beliefs, snakes are considered healers of the earth. Yeah. They are said to possess the secrets of Earth's creation and wisdom, Mm -hmm. which this coincides with the Greek god of medicine, which I can't ever pronounce his name, Asclepius, I think. Yeah. And he had a rod that had a snake twirled around it. I think that's cool. Um, And and I like to say Voldemort. (laughs) I mean, true. You're right. That was was his familiar. You're right. Yeah. As familiar snakes are thought to represent masculine energy and a secretive nature, which goes right along there with those Slytherins. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I think I know. I know I'm going to get a snake tattoo at some oh, point. Nice. I just know I want a snake at some point. Nice. Because I think that they're just so, they're beautiful creatures. Mm-hmm. And do I want one as a pet? No. Mm-hmm. But I do respect their beauty, and I respect their nature, and I respect why they're on this planet. Mm-hmm. So I want I want a tattoo at some point of a snake. That would be cool. Uh huh. Spiders. Spiders are considered one of the superior familiars due to their small size. They can sit quite comfortably with you wherever <laughs> you go. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> they are often linked with creativity and patience. The web that they weave is symbolic of the strings of fate. They can also be considered to be a reflection of your darker personality traits. And it's considered bad luck to kill a spider. Well, I'm sorry to everybody who's listening who loves their spiders. I don't like them. (laughs) And I have killed a few. Yeah. A few. More than a few. Yeah. Because in the house that I grew up in, I... When I hit, like, 14, maybe 15, I moved down into the basement. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a teenager is like, I want my own Um, cave, my own own space. space." Yeah. So I moved down to the basement, and the basement is, like, it's not all the way underground. It's, like, half underground, half not. So I have, like, a window and everything. But somehow, wolf spiders, they're, like... They scare me. They're the big, and they're fast. Ooh. Yes, big so, brown spiders. Yeah, so I have had a fair share of scares from spiders. I've been scared of spiders since I was a baby. I don't know mm-hmm. why. Maybe in a past life, a giant spider ate me or something. <laughs> but I'm terrified of spiders, mm-hmm. and I know they're just as terrified as you, as you are of them. I don't care. I don't care. I don't know if they are or not. I went to my uh, mother-in-law's house, and we were sitting out on the deck, and they had a, a coffee table type thing out there, and uh-huh. there was this little black jumping spider, little teeny tiny thing. Yeah. And I'm terrified of it, and so I'm like all reared back, and it turns to me, and it's little, it, oh. it flashes its little fangs at me. It knows it that knows. you're scared. It absolutely knows. Uh, I I just can't get the image of the wolf spiders out of yeah, my those, head. Yeah, those are terrifying. I have a story for you, actually. Okay. So this was the summer, and I remember when it was summer of 2016. Okay. I still lived with my parents. I was about to graduate high school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I was, obviously, I was on the phone with my boyfriend at the time, Uh you know, texting back and forth. It was like three o'clock in the morning. And I had made myself this, like, dinky, like, bedside table. Because I I thought I was cool and I didn't have, like, a bed frame. 
Yeah. And so I just had, like, my mattress on the floor. So I made myself this, like, cool table that would go, like, that would fit, right? Yeah. Well, one night I was ready to go to bed, so I was done with my phone, and I <laughs> I put it on the table, and I had already turned off the light. So I'm laying there in the dark, and I put my phone on the table, but I have enough light from my phone on my screen to see something black skitter across oh. my phone that I just put down and go underneath and hang underneath the table top. Oh my God. So let me just tell you how this table looked. It was a thin piece of plywood and four legs. That's all that it was. So it was a thin and I painted it white. So it was wobbly. It was not good. It was not a good, (laughs) but it was hanging underneath right next to my face. I tear myself up from the bed. Right. And I go upstairs and I wake up my little sister who is, like six years younger than I am. <laughs> so she was probably like 10 at the time, 10, 11. And I'm like, hey, you need to come help me kill this spider. And she's usually like, yeah, whatever. But she looks at it and she bursts into tears. <laughs> and so I burst into tears because she's not going to kill the spider for me. So I end up, she ends up going back to sleep and I end up going back to bed like not in my own room. I fall asleep in our guest room, right? I just go to sleep in our guest room. <laughs> so uh, after I wake up and my dad's finally up in the morning, my dad's like, why are you sleeping in the guest room? I'm like, there's a huge spider in my room. And he goes, oh, whatever, I'll go kill it. Well, it wasn't there when of course he got down there. So he went to the store and he bought me this bug spray, like the, the, the spider repellent killer yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. And... He said he sprayed it all in the area. He moved my bed around, sprayed it around the corners of my room. Mm -hmm. And he goes, just give it like a day. Don't go in there for like until nighttime. And so I go back in there at night with him. And there are three. Oh, my God. Dead spiders underneath my bedside table that were all the same. They were all the oh, wolf spiders. Oh, my God. So who actually knows how many of those spiders were on my bedside table at that time? They just crawled over you while you were sleeping. Yeah, that just it just terrifies oh. me. I am so terrified of just terrified of spiders. It's not even funny. I will pass out or vomit or both <laughs> if I like encounter a spider. Like I can't do or it. Burst into tears or all three. <laughs> vomit, vomit, cry, pass out, and then that's it. Like, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of spiders. Yeah, I'm not. I can't do it. So, toads. Toads are given this horrible bad rap. They're seen as negative omens, particularly because they've got the little warty appearance on them. Yeah. Well, in medieval Europe, many believe warts were the mark of a witch. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) And supposedly, it's where they kept all their magic. So, people with moles or warts were thought to hold their magic in those spots. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is so cool. hmm Because I have, like, my whole body has, like, are we thinking, like, moles you've or got freckles? An, you've got an overload. <laughs> I have so much that it would be cool. It's cool to, hi- like, theorize about that because I have so many, like, like, and they're not huge. I have a huge one on my head. Like, it's like a size of a dime. That's the biggest one I have. But I think that's cool to, like, think about. Well, it was also thought, which I kind of alluded to earlier, that warts or third nipples were spots where a familiar suckled from their witch Ah. to share the magic and energies of that witch. I get that. So those are more raised. Mm -hmm. Like like nipple-like. Like a mole. Yeah. Yeah, like a mole. Like raised um, moles. The little uh, hummingbird came back, but... I still didn't see it. I think you're lying to me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, At any rate, toads were often accused of being sent to someone's home to poison them or spread disease uh, by their witch counterparts. They were also used as a common potion ingredient, you know, eye of toad or whatever, you know. Yeah. And they were thought to be used in dark magic and necromancy. Mm -hmm. But as familiars, they're actually quite intelligent, and they're associated with clarity and divination. They are a representation of transformation, death and rebirth, and hidden power. What was that show? I think 
I think I, I think we've seen it. I don't know the name of it, and I don't even remember if it was a show or a movie. But there were witches in it, and they had a toad, and they, like, pulled back their hair or something, and they, like, raised their toad up to it, and it, like, suckled on its, like, Oh, mold. wow. Do you remember? Do you no. know what I'm talking No. It's going to bother me until I find it now, so hopefully I can find it. But, oh, my gosh, I can't remember. But I, I think it was, like, I'm, I think I'm going to be wrong when I say that it's an Outlander and... Hmm. That show. I didn't see all of that. I've only seen like the first two seasons but of I Outlander. Thought, yeah, it's in one of the it's in one of the first two. Hmm. Because she goes back in time and she finds another person that had also gone back in time before her. Yeah. yeah from I know the sixties, yeah. Yes. And she was a witch and she was burned at the stake. Mm -hmm. But I think that it that's what I'm thinking about. Unless if I'm wrong and I'm just thinking about like a different show or movie. I don't know. I'll but I remember that. And it was like the most disturbing thing to me watching it when I was younger. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So cats. Cats are typically thought of as protectors of the home. They represent independent and self-nurturing attitudes. They are considered the best of familiars because their abilities, because of their abilities to travel between the earthly and spiritual realms. Mm -hmm. Cats are also taught to be particularly sensitive to psychic experiences and are great assistants for rituals and spell work. Okay, that's cool. So I have like a little blurb on like cats, kind of. Okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, familiars, also known as imps, again were said to be given to witches by the devil, like you said earlier, mm -hmm. or brought or bought or inherited from other witches. Okay. A witch could have several of them. Cats were the favored forms, especially black ones. Okay. And so the fear that all cats were witches, like familiars, was one of the primary reasons of the famous cat massacre. Yeah. And that swept uh, medieval Europe, and familiars were given names like any household pet. Most of them um, were like, which were, uh, yeah, I'm just going to stop it right there. Okay. Like, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> um, like, any, like any old name, like Ariel or... Right. Yeah. So perhaps the best known familiar name was, and I can't really pronounce it, like Piwacket. Pie, pie whack it. Pie whack it. The moncure. The moniker. Moniker. Wow. <laughs> I knew what you meant. Uh, the uh, the witch's cat in the movie Belle. Right? Belle, book, and candle? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Belle, book, and candle. I I just call it the bell. Yeah. I, I think when I first saw it i called it the bell too because that's what i always say like oh i'm gonna go watch, gonna watch the, the bell. bell yeah okay sorry but <laughs> pie whack it was the cat's name in that one i yeah. didn't remember that and a name that dates back to the renaissance like england was pie whack it matthew hopkins the famous witch hunter stated oh was a name that no mortal could invent interesting which is so weird pie whack it pie whack it huh so, how do you summon a familiar? If you're wanting to get a familiar, how do you summon one? And I got this straight from the wiccaacademy.com, which, of course, we'll post with when we upload yeah. this. Yep. Um, so, here is a summon familiar spell. <laughs> and, yes, we did ho hear you open your next Diet Pepsi. My next Diet Pepsi. <laughs> um, I'm still drinking my drink. It's... It's not gone yet. So if you don't have a physical familiar and you're interested in summoning one, you might want to try this spell. Okay. You'll need a dream journal, a photo or figurine of an animal that embodies your characteristics, an amethyst or azurite crystal. So the best place to summon a familiar is in your home. Choose a spot that you spend the most time in. So I guess for me, it would probably be my deck. If possible, try to time your spell to coincide with a full moon and right before bedtime. Get comfortable and meditate while holding the crystal, concentrating in particular on calling upon a familiar. When you're ready, speak your intent clearly and loudly. 
if you are feeling creative, you can add a specific incantation or a poem to establish a stronger bond with that spell. Mm -hmm. Write your intent or incantation in your dream journal. The next morning, analyze your dreams for any clues that might relate to your familiar. Make sure to do this immediately upon waking up, because as you know, a lot of us forget our dreams, you know, within the first 10 minutes of being awake. Yeah. To increase your chance of success, you might find that it takes several nights of practicing this ritual before you're visited by your familiar. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't come in the forms you expect. A goat might not be in... The traditional animal form, but may manifest in terms of stubborn emotions or butting heads with someone in the dream. So take note of how you're feeling throughout your dreams and try to write as much detail as possible. Yeah. Creating a ritual that centers around nat- nature, like gardening, meditating outside, etc., will also increase your chances at summoning a familiar. Open yourself up to receiving what the universe has to offer. Always be mindful of your surroundings during the ritual. A particular animal could canter in or hop or whatever in the blink of an eye. Yeah. So, personally, I think that your familiar finds you. Um, But I do think you need to be aware of what's going on around you to see them. So, whether you do this spell and it helps you be more aware of the creatures around you, or whether this spell actually manifests and calls the familiar to you, yeah. either way is fine. And then I found something really interesting. Okay. It said that there are low familiars and high familiars. And a low familiar is a non-living familiar, such as books that randomly appear. Oh my gosh, I love that. I had never heard of that before. I love it so much. And then a high familiar is a living creature like a plant, an animal, or humans. Yeah. Uh, that's, I think, everything that I've got on it. I want to I want to say that's all that I have, but I have just a little bit. I'm okay. Li- I'm just a little bit. Okay. So... I just have, like, a fun, like, little blurb. Okay. So, Romans, and I got this from a wiki, like, Wikipedia. Yeah. So, it's wicca.wikia.org. Okay. I got all this from there. Okay. And I didn't really paraphrase because I thought that this was just fun okay. to just say as is. Okay. So, Romans believe that each household was protected by a familiar whose job it was to keep the family from harm. And shamans and medicine men... Uh, various tribal traditions have long honored the spirits of animals for their wisdom and assistance in magical workings. Okay. So, yet, despite the positive influences, we think of a uh, familiar, the most common image is that of a evil witch with her fearsome black cat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And this archetype straight f- um, comes straight from fairy tales of our childhood, and it roots in the fear of superstitions of the dark ages, yeah. and yeah. it bears a resemblance to the modern day familiar. Mm-hmm. And that's all that I'm going to have. Like, that's okay. all I'm going to say from that. Okay. So, that's all that I have. And I really like talking about familiars i've put this topic off for a while yes you did because you didn't feel like you had one and i'm not sure that you're entirely comfortable that ariel really is yours well i just have a hard time because once i commit to that ariel is getting very old Mm -hmm. and i haven't had her for that long Mm -hmm. like seven years eight seven eight years is a long time Mm -hmm. but it's just not enough when you love your pet so dearly And she is just honestly, she is just honestly the love of my life. Like, sorry to my husband because <laughs> he is also, it, they're different loves. Yes, he is definitely. the love of my life, but Ariel is also a deep love that I, I have a connection with her that I have never had a same connection to as an animal, like another yeah. pet. And my husband and I are actually getting another puppy towards the end of the year oh. to beginning of the year because his parents, their dog, uh, they didn't fix her in time. <laughs> okay. So she is having puppies. Oh. So we're nice. going to get one of them. Yes. That's nice. We're going to get one of them. And so we're getting another puppy, but I, I fear that I won't have that same connection to it as I do mm-hmm. with Ariel. Mm-hmm. And so Ariel's not going to be a- around for much longer. Yeah. And so it just hurts my heart to even think about have- having a world without her. Because mm-hmm. my friend got her 
like 13, 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. I want to say more like 12, 13, 14. Yeah. We don't really know. Like I have to ask her, my friend, but I'm not really Mm -hmm. in touch with her anymore. So I can't just like, hey, like what year did you get Ariel? Like, Mm -hmm. so I, I, I think it's 12 to 13 to 14 years that she is and she's pretty old. Yeah. And I've taken really good care of her and she is my light mm-hmm. at the end of the tunnel and I just don't like thinking about it like that cuz once I commit to it then something's going to happen like it always yeah, does with I gotcha. me. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. <sighs> okay. But I mean, that's all that I have and you and your bees. <laughs> yep. Me and my bees. So, thank you so much for listening. Find us on all social medias at C3 Witchy Podcast. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Our website is www.c3witchypodcast.com. There you will find all our links to all our social media as well as merch and Patreon. And new and improved, we have linked. I mean, I guess it's not new. It's been a couple weeks. But new and improved, we have linked all of the places that you can get our podcast i mean there are more places but all like the main major ones the major podcast streaming services (laughs) we have um attached those so i i was very excited when i found out that i could do that on our website that was above my ability with that website i attached uh stitcher spotify apple Podcasts, google podcast and a iHeart Radio and a couple more. Okay. I think at least one more. So if you guys can't find us on there, you can go to our website but and click on the link. Definitely go to our Patreon and become a patron. Yes. We've got stuff that only patrons will have access to. Yes. Um, and we're going to start, um, I think, next month or if you sign up this month, we are going to collaborate with... Uh, Dragon, Dragon Craft, Craft Creations, creations mm-hmm. and they will send us tote bags that mm-hmm. we then can send to you guys once you guys subscribe yes. and become patrons. So we're so excited because we, we designed this with Dragon Craft Creations yes. like ourselves, and I'm so excited to even see what you guys think. Like, if you guys do want to, we're only doing this for a couple of months because tote bags are usually summer things. Right. So we'll come up with something else for ne- like the following like winter and fall mm-hmm. months as mm-hmm. well. Maybe like something. Uh, we'll just coffee see. mug or coffee something mug. as it gets colder. Oh, that would be so much fun. Mm-hmm. I would buy one. <laughs> I would buy one. <laughs> so, so yeah. Please um, become. Patrons. Patrons, because I have posted some stuff, and so has River. So Mm -hmm. we've been trying to keep up with it a little bit. And it would just be so exciting for you guys to come see extra bonus, like, content from us. Content, yes. Hi. Also, we're going to add this in. This is Ren. We are so excited because we already recorded this episode before we got our very first patron. So we're very excited. Thank you, Nakia T, if I'm saying that right. Thank you so much. But So thank you, guys. Yeah. And I guess, what was it? We, we Y'all will hear us next week. I can't remember. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> bye. All right. Bye.